Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Phenotyping the Tumor Microenvironment Using DNA Barcoded Multiplex Technology. I'm Susie Valdez of LabRoots, and I'll be your moderator for today's event. Today's educational web seminar is presented by LabRoots and brought to you by Leica Biosystems. To learn more about our sponsor, visit them at www.leicabiosystems.com. So let's get started. I'd like to remind everyone that this event is interactive, and we encourage you to participate by submitting as many questions as you want at any time you want during the presentation. To do so, simply type them into the Ask a Question box and click Send. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for at the end of the presentation. Also, please notice that you can share this webinar on your personal social media. Just click on the Social Sharing tab and let your friends and colleagues know about today's live event. If you have any trouble seeing or hearing this presentation, simply click on that support tab found at the top right of your presentation window or report your problem by clicking the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. This presentation is educational and offers continuing education credits. Please click on the Continuing Education Credit tab located at the top right of the presentation window and follow the process to obtain your credit. I now present today's speaker, Chafe Sun. Chafe is a senior histotechnologist with GSK R&D. For a complete biography on our speaker, please visit the biography tab at the top of your screen. Chafe, welcome. You may now begin your presentation, sir. Hello, everyone. I'm Chafe Sun. Counselor, senior histo technologist with uh, JSK. As a platform, our team uses multiple modalities such as immunohistochemistry, flow cytometry, NGS to increase our understanding of biomarkers in both normal and diseased conditions. We we'll develop, optimize, and validate various assays supporting studies from first time in human to physical clinical trials. Specifically, I'm responsible for immunohistochemistry, immunofluorescence, in situ hybridization, and multiplex. Today, I'm going to share some of my recent experience using DNA barcoded multiplex technology to phenotype tumor microenvironment. Before I get started a statement, I have no conflict of interest with Leica Biosystem, Outview, and Indica Labs. All the materials used in this presentation are for education purposes only. The human body samples were sourced aesthetically, and their research use was in accord with the terms of the informed consent under an IRB EC approved protocol. Here are some learning objectives. I hope by the end of this presentation, you will be able to understand the complex of tumor microenvironment and its importance in drug development. Introduce the RTView DNA barcoding and exchange technology for multiple, multiplex immunofluorescence. Last but not least, highlight the processes of immune image fusion spatial analysis, and co-localization of markers on individual cells. First, let's have a look at what is a uh, my tumor microenvironment. The tumor mass consists not only of a heterogeneous population of cancer cells, but also a variety of resident and infiltrating host cells secreted factors and extracellular matrix, collectively known as tumor microenvironment. Blood vessels supply oxygen and nutrients to the tumor. Along the vessel, there are endocellular cells, endocellular cells, fibroblasts, and parasites, innate and adaptive immune cells like macrophages, NK, granulocytes, lymphocytes were 
frequently found in the tumor microenvironment. These cells secrete chemokines, cytokines, interle interleukins that regulate immune civilians, tumor suppression. However, tumor cells also have developed a set of mechanisms to evade immune surveillance. For example, myeloid-derived suppression cells, regulatory T cells, macrophages, they also were able to produce factors to suppress immune response. In prior antigen-presenting present, antigen block T cell trafficking and activation, tumor progression is profoundly influenced by interaction of cancer cells with their environment, which ultimately determine whether the tumor is eradicated, continues to grow, or metastasized. The tumor microenvironment is a dynamic structure which can shape therapeutic response and uh, re resistance, justifying the recent impetus to target components of tumor microenvironment. One of the examples of was the, was the success of immune checkpoint inhibitors. This map, this map shows you the landscape of current immunotherapy. On the most outside cycle, there are treatments that have been approved or under active clinical development. Some of them are very well known, like the PD-1, PD-L1, CDL4 monoclonal antibodies. They have been shown to be effective for multiple cancer types. The inner blue and green cycles are their respective targets, pathways, and mechanism of action. The clinical outcomes in patients are sig significantly affected by the immune status of the tumor based on the infiltrated immune cell type, density, their location and function. We can briefly divide this map into three categories, hot, cold, and altered. Currently approved checkpoint inhibitors work best in patients with hot tumors. Only a small portion of patients can benefit from this treatment. For patients with cold or altered tumors, alternative treatment should be considered. Problem is how to stratify the patient, give each the most effective treatment, and predict the clinical outcomes. The answer relies on biomarkers. A biomarker is a measurable substance in an organism whose presence is indicative of some phenomena such as disease, infection, or environmental exposure. Throughout the development of pharmaceutical R&D, biomarkers can help improve decision-making process. This map shows you the process of a drug from target validation to candidate selection, first time in human, and undergo several rounds of clinical trials, all the way to clinical uh, to regulatory approval. Even at the very beginning of as the target uh, validation, you sh the scientists should begin to consider strategies for biomarkers, such as pharmacodynamics, surrogate, or clinical biomarkers. Also in candidate selection, you can use biomarker data from in vivo and preclinical models to, to evaluate the compound efficacy and model human dosing. In clinical trials, you will implement the biomark strategy and test the value of biomarkers to predict and the disease progression. So in later clinical development, you will first test the value of biomarkers to the clinical outcomes.
immunohistochemistry is one of the methods to study biomarkers. The current method is uh, using single plex immunohistochemistry to uh, evaluate the biomarkers on sections. It is, they are used because they can be evaluated using a standard bright field microscope and their morph morphological details are present to aid the interpretation. However, there are some limitations of single plex chromogenic immunohistochemistry, which drives for multiplex. For example, because the core, the biopsy samples are relatively very tiny, they are very precious. So normally there will be limited amount of uh, patient tissue. You want to use multiplex to see these samples. Also multiplex will facilitate the demonstration of co-localized markers and their measurement using image analysis. As we go towards digital workflow and multiple, multiplex image analysis, so we can get the spatial information for cell-cell interaction. So multiplex also will reduce the stock of consumables and reduce uh, waste. Going forward, single plex immunohistochemistry will still be valuable at the very beginning of the assay development. So you will select a panel of HRP dyes that are capable of single plex IHC on the uh, Ventana or like a bond instrument. Then you evaluate best practice by testing various uh, approaches, then establish guidelines for selecting optimal uh, multiplex, multiplex immunofluorescence approach. So currently on the market, there are uh, quite a few options available. For example, the HRMP pyramide technology, which are available from Ventana and uh, Akoya OPPO type detection. So there's another technology from Cell IDX. They used modified hepatin to label their primary antibodies. Then you can uh, use anti-hepatin secondary to detect your target. So the fourth one is using DNA bark to label primary, primary antibodies. So r has developed a very good technology based on this. So this will be the focus of this presentation today. Here are some advantages of RTU method over conventional immunohistochemistry. First, it's high specificity since each antibody is tagged with a unique DNA barcode linker. All the primary antibodies are cocktailed together and applied to a single solution and incubation step. That use, this will save you a lot of time. This technology is non-species dependent detection. So you don't have to worry about selecting and quenching or denaturing any species secondary antibodies. It's pyramide and HRP free detection. The background will be very, relatively low from, um, because it's free from uh, uh, endogenous proxy days. The signal is amplified, it's very bright. The protocol is right now is uh, fully automated on bond RX. The whole process can be completed with less than uh, six hours. This is a um, brief overview of uh, our interview four plaques IC. After the UX and antigen travel, your uh, cocktail of primary antibodies will be applied onto the section. This, each of these an primary antibodies were labeled with a unique DNA barcode, so which allows them to be recognized specifically in later steps. After staining, you, the, the, gene, the barcode on the uh, primary antibody will be amplified significantly, which allows, which allows uh, a better um, signal-to-noisy ratio. 
then last step detection, you will use a mixture of fluorescent labeled probes, which were complementary to the gene, uh, gene tags, so you can visualize your target as conventional uh, immune fluorescence. So remember, all these steps can be done in single one step. You don't have to worry about uh, several rounds of primary antibody incubation or stripping. The whole process can be done within six hours. This workflow is a <clears throat> an automated, fully automated workflow for this assay. So right, right now, the RTU has developed a, an optimized protocol on bond Rx. So after the staining, we will image the slides using a vector Plaris scanner. After we the scanning, we will check the images for quality and consistency. So after that, the cover sleeve can be removed and then for uh, additional AT staining, then you can register and fuse the, your, your AT with multiplex immune fluorescence then for further Im image analysis. At the start, we purchased two ready-to-use panels from RTU for testing. The first one is uh, PD-1, second one is PDL one So on PD-1 panel, we have CD45RO for memory T cells, PD-1 for exhausted or suppress suppressive T cells, CD3 for T cells. On PDL1 panel, we have CD8, for cytotoxic T cells, CD68 for macrophages, PDL1 for immune checkpoint marker. So on both panels, PANCT and SOX10 will be used as a tumor cell and epithelial cell marker. These slides show you uh, a simple uh, RTU protocol on bond, R bond RX. It is fully automated. After baking and do X, followed by year two and in treatment for 20 minutes, you can apply RTU reagent solutions onto your sections. So followed by a brief antibody uh, diluent blocking. So you apply your uh, primary antibody cocktails on the section and incubate for 60 minutes, then followed by a quick pre-amplification mix for 25 minutes, and then a uh, very robust uh, signal amplification for uh, 90 minutes. So before you apply the uh, fluorescent props, a nuclear constant will be applied onto the section. So this is an example showing uh, the staining in human tonsil, CD45 in green, PD1 in orange. So you can see a lot of uh, PD1 standing in general centers, CD3 in red, a lot of CD3 positive cells in the in, in the follicle region. Pan CT were labeled in uh, white. So on the right you have a PDL1 panel, the CD8 in green. There's a lot of CD8 positive cells in throughout this uh, section. CD68 in orange, CD PDL1 in Red, you see a lot of uh, uh, co localization of PDL1 with CD68 in the general centers. Similarly, uh, Pan CK in white. So, on this image, we co register, co -register the uh, multiplex immune fluorescence with reference uh, HE together. So, on the HE so images, you can see, uh, uh, the, uh, you can better visualize the anatomical compartment and then uh, cross validate with the uh, staining of markers on, 
on the uh, multiplex immune fluorescence. Then let's have a closer look at this uh, immune fluorescence and together with AT. In order to better demonstrate the staining of uh, each individual markers, so I put the markers into uh, separate channels. <clears throat> Here you can see a very nice um, strong medium to strong memory staining for CD8 and CD6. CD68, uh, a very nice uh, intrasubtle uh, plasma staining, and for uh, PDL1, its expression mainly localized um, on the uh, epithelial cells. For um, pan CK and SOX10, so this uh, labels the uh, epithelial cells. So in this corner, you see the uh, final co localization of this image. The so same thing for our PDL1 panel. So CD45, PDL1, and C3, they have very uh, nice uh, membrane staining. So on this corner, you see uh, the colorization of uh, PD1 and CD3. So we also tested uh, some uh, human tumor uh, TMAs. So just to give you an example, this is a stomach tumor call. So on this uh, PD1 panel, you see a very nice co localization of uh, CD3 with PDL1, CD3 with uh, 45 RO. So on the right, you see uh, very strong staining of CD8 and the CD45, while the PDL1 expression was relatively low. If we turn on the tumor marker, so you can see the uh, special relationship of this immune cells with the tumor cells. So, so far we have talked about uh, stain four marks on one section. So how about uh, uh, doing more markers like uh, eight markers? Can we um, put one panel on, on top of an another one? So the answer is yes. So Outview has developed a technology using a gene exchange. So <clears throat> As shown on this uh, graph, so you can see, uh, like similarly, like uh, the four plaques, you apply all uh, eight markers in a single uh, cocktail, apply the onto the uh, section. Then uh, instead of visualizing all eight, so you will visualize uh, four of them individually. So in round one, you apply uh, three or four props on the section, then image the section for these four markers. So after you finish the image, then you can remove the cup slip and run a um, exchange protocol. Then after that, you can apply the second set of uh, fluorescent props onto the section. So we, together with Outview, we have developed a, a made-to-order seven-plex IC. So we have, uh, on round one, we have CD8, uh, CD68, PDL1. On round two, we have KS67, Grand Zan B, CD3, and Pine C key. So we use CD3, CD8, and uh, CD68 to phenotype the uh, cell types. And Grand Zan B, KS67, PDL1, were used as an expression marker. We used a pan CK to label the tumor as well as uh, a segmentation marker. So here's a list of the phenotypes we looked at. So we uh, analyzed the single, single positive, double positive, or triple positive uh, phenotypes on the, on the section. So cell density, percentage of cells, in the tumor and lung tumor were reported respectively. After finishing the, finish the staining, 
we uh, image the slides and send the images to our uh, pathology for um, QC and reviewing. So here we actually we send uh, 20 blood tumors and 20 uh, non small cell lung cancers. Here just to show you uh, the result for a blood tumors. Pathologists evaluate the, uh, the, the tumors based and classify them as code, hot, or X code tumors. So as you can see from this table, about 50% of the samples were uh, classified as excluded. 25% for uh, code and uh, hot tumor age. Yeah, this is a, a representative, representative image for hot uh, immune flame tumor tissues. So the tumor was labeled by uh, pan CK in white and CD8 positive cells in green. So you can easily see a lot of uh, CD8 uh, T cells within the tumor. Also for uh, <clears throat> you, there, are, there were a lot of uh, CD8 and uh, C CD3 and CD68 positive uh, cells within the tumor as well. Um, there, was, there was a very nice uh, co localization on PDL1 with uh, macrophages. And this is an example for uh, cold tumors, which is a uh, immune desert tumor. So you can barely see any uh, CD8 positive cells within on this section. Also, there are very few CD3 and CD68 positive cells on this section as well. This, this is an example of for excluded, for immune excluded tumor uh, sections. So you, on this section, you can see uh, a lot of CD8 cell infiltration in, in the tissue, but very few of them were in within the tumor. Sim similarly, for CD3 and CD8, CD68 positive cells, none of them were found in the within the tumor. This is a, another example from non small cell lung cancer with uh, selected phenotypes. As shown on the images, you can see a uh, very nice co-localization of CD3 and CD8 with CD8. PDL1 co-localized with CD68 and PAN-CK. So <clears throat> also you can see uh, the special relationship between these immune cells with, uh, with tumor. So after we get it, the images from round one, round two, so we uh, fuse the images together into one single image using Halo. <clears throat> After the fusion, we used uh, the tumor marker CK and dead pay cells to classify the tumor, the, the tissue into tumor versus non-tumor. Then we uh, used the, the high-plex algorithm in Halo to uh, detect the cells and the perform phenotyping analysis on, on the, each individual images. So HALO actually provides a lot of uh, algorithm for, uh, for image analysis. So, uh, so here I use the, the high-plex uh, algorithm for analysis. So after setting up the uh, threshold for each marker, then you can um, <clears throat> determine your phenotypes through a combination of uh, marker and channel positivity. After we finish the image analysis in HALO, so we send the, uh, the images together with the uh, markup to pathologists again to let them review and QC the quality of analysis. So, <clears throat> 
on most of the sections, the algorithm, the algorithm successfully de detects most of the cells with only uh, very few cells filled, filled because they are uh, either lost during the second round staining or lost by the fusion segmentation artifact. So for CD3, CD8, CD68, uh, the algorithm successfully detects up to 90% of all the cells, which are very sensitive. So four of the samples were, ex were excluded from an image analysis because of uh, either uh, excessive uh, autofluorescence or image misalignment. Uh, so this, here I show you some uh, quantitative analysis uh, results for blood cancer. So on the right, on the left is uh, the cell density analysis, on the right is the percentage analysis. So from this graph, you can uh, see uh, the pan-sticky positive cells were uh, enriched in the tumor area, while the number were of sticky positive cells were relatively low in uh, non-tumor cells, which means the um, Halo classification algorithm works very well to classify tumor and non-tumor. The number of CD68 positive cells and CD3, CD8 positive cells were comparable for the intense, for cell intensity. Uh, the number was around uh, 400 to 500 per millimeter. The percentage was around 5 to 10 percent. So at the, same, at the same time, you also know, uh, will notice a lot of uh, single uh, samples in with a relatively high uh, CD68 and CD8 cells. So it means they probably will respond better to uh, immunotherapy. So <clears throat> overall, the number of grand B positive cells were very uh, low on all of the samples. Additionally, we uh, Analyzed um, <clears throat> the number of uh, the, the expression of uh, KS67, PDL1 expression in cytotoxic T cells, macrophages, and tumor cells. Most of the uh, CD3, CD8 positive cells were negative for both KS67 and PDL1. About 10% of uh, Macrophages were positive for PDL1. For uh, sticky positive cells, the mo <clears throat> they were po uh, they were more uh, positive for KSD7 and uh, PD PDL1 positive cells were found within the tumor compared to the non-tumor area. Then we uh, plotted. Uh, the percentage of tubes on, on this graph, and we mapped the uh, path evaluation and to this graph. So you can see uh, the tumor in red dot, the non-tumor in uh, green cube. So uh, this is uh, the hot tumor was represented by a dotted box. Exclude, excluded tumor were in blank box cold tumor in not, bo not box here. So basically, we observed a very uh, good uh, concordance between halo data with um, path evaluation. So beside the cell number quantification, you can also play around a more uh, spatial analysis. So here, uh, this images show you uh, the distribution of CD3, CD8 positive cells in the um, blood tumor sample, CD3, uh, CD8 positive cells in green, pan CK positive cells in yellow. So the black line annotated the area or uh, tumor area. So based on this image, you can clearly tell this is a uh, hot tumor, so you see there are a lot of uh, CD3, CD8 positive cells in both in within and outside the tumor. 
then you can go ahead to analyze to measure the the distance of each uh, cytotoxic T cells to to the nearest uh, tumor cells. So we, so we analyzed uh, the num the the T cell cytotoxic T cells within a uh, 200 micron distance from the tumor. So each line represents a pair of uh, T cells with its uh, nearest tumor cells. So on the right uh, graph, you can see uh, this is a number of uh, cytotoxic T cells within uh, this distance of uh, from tumor, so you can tell easily tell within 20 uh, micron distance from the tumor, there are quite a lot of uh, cytotoxic T cells with increase of uh, the distance. The, the number of T cells uh, decreased very sharply. Also, you can uh, similarly you can. Add, find the nearest uh, T cells for each tumor cells on this image. So each uh, gray line represents a pair of uh, <coughs> tumor cells with its nearest T cells. So you can measure the distance between a T and uh, tumor cells. So for this image, the average, the average distance uh, is around 23 micron. Additionally, you can perform an infiltration analysis to count CD8 T cells in each uh, gradient zone and identify hotspots from the heat map. This plot on the right shows the density of CD8, CD3 C8 T cells in each zone. To left meaning inside tumor, or to right meaning towards stroma. Again, before doing any analysis, make sure you talk to your pathologist and uh, project leader to understand the question and uh, hypothesize, then select the most appropriate uh, method for analysis. Last but not least, I'd like to thank uh, all my uh, colleagues for their help and the constructive suggestions during the whole process. Also, I want to thank Leslie and Daniela for their help with image review, QC, and classification. Special thank you to LikeAbout System for sp sponsoring this webinar, RTU and Indica Labs for their generous help during acid development. With that, I will stop here and take any questions. And thank you, Chafe, for that informative presentation. We will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have any questions you'd like to ask, please do so now. Just click on the Ask a Question box located on the far left of your screen. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for. So let's get started. We have quite a few questions already coming in, Jafe. How do you build your own panel? Does it cost a lot? Uh, that that's a good question. So uh, actually, we collaborated with uh, RTV before the uh, marketing the product. So we uh, choose the panel markers for immune uh, and uh, tumor cells. So the customer that uh, so actually recently uh, RTV has just uh, released a, a U view panel. So you, they give you a, a list of uh, over thirty different markers you can choose from that list and make your own panel and uh, for, for props from that. So right now, I think the, the price is uh, relatively very expensive. So from our experience, uh, so it will cost you about uh, 500 uh, per slide. Thank you for that. And is unmixing needed for this um, ultivate assay, do you see any bleed through from adjacent channels? So actually, uh, unmixing is not needed for this technology since uh, all the props were uh, labeled with uh, uh, fluorophyll dyes, which has a, a non-overlapping spectrum, so you don't have to uh, uh, unmix them together with the, uh, the narrow banded uh, filters you used for imaging slides, so it won't be a 
big issue for uh, to see any uh, bleed through. Thank you, Jose. And again, I want to thank our audience for their live participation and what coming in. Jose, does the exchange call also strip off your primary antibodies? And what is the efficiency for that? Uh, that's that's a great question. So um, the DNA exchange protocol won't remove the uh, the uh, the bonded uh, uh, primary antibody. It just remove uh, all the uh, fluorophore products from round one, and and this process is very gentle. Make sure uh, uh, your tissue integrity and the, the bonded uh, antibodies still remain on the uh, on the section, so you don't have to worry about the uh, uh, the efficiency. Thank you for that. And since DNA oligos were used in this assay, do you pre-treat the tissues with D and I apologize, DNAs to remove antigenous um, DNA? Oh, that's that's a, a great question. Indigenous, Actually, we 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 don't uh, pre pre-treat uh, uh, the tissues with DNAs since. Uh, each DNA barcode is, is unique, which you cannot find in human genome. And this uh, barcode has been um, pre-screened for uh, any uh, human exogenous uh, DNA sequence. So uh, we, we don't have to worry about the uh, non-specific signal from the DNA barcode. Also, you want to keep uh, the uh, human uh, endogenous DNA for uh, your uh, counter staining. Um, our next question, how do you know your dyes only color the cells you want? Do you mark them one by one? So actually, uh, you label your uh, targets using um, highly specific antibodies. This And this antibody was conjugated to a DNA barcode. So you use uh, a, fl a flu fluorescent tag labeled uh, another sequence which is complementary to the barcode you used, so which makes your uh, binding uh, is very specific. So you don't, you don't do it uh, uh, one by one, you just use the antibody, throw, throw them on the tissue, and you visualize them all together. Thank you. And again, audience, thank you for your questions. Any questions we cannot answer today will be answered via email. We have time for a few more questions. How many CD8 cells are PDL1? Are they tonsil or tumor? Uh, this this is a great question. So uh, normally uh, PDL1 uh, will be expressed on, on tumor cells or immune cells. So it depends on the, uh, each uh, disease condition. So. Uh, on our case, uh, we observed very few. Uh, CD8 T cells express uh, PDL1. Um, so our quantification give uh, about uh, five, uh, around five percent positive uh, positivity for uh, PDL1. So actually, uh, considering uh, some uh, infiltrating uh, CD8 T cells, the the interpret in the uh, PDL1 positive tumor cells. So it, um, sometimes the the halo algorithm will pick up a little bit uh, uh, PDL1 staining from the neighboring uh, tumor cells. So actually, I think the real number of uh, uh, PDL1 positive CD8 T cell will be below that uh, 5%. Okay, perfect. But what about the application of signal? Is it done over the slide itself or after elution? The amplification is done uh, before you apply your uh, uh, fluorescent prop. So it's done on the slide. Thank you, Jose. And regarding the antibodies, do we have to titrate those antibodies for our kind of tissue? Mm, no, since uh, the any, the, the, all the region comes in in a kit so you don't have you don't have to further dilute anything so since this acid has been uh, pre-optimized you just uh prepare your region and throw them on your uh, bond rx 
That's it. Wonderful. And again, all these great questions coming in. Jafay, how many markers can be managed in par- par- uh, par- parallel? Is it order markers as you performed two sequential analysis with four markers? So in each round of staining, you will only visualize uh, four markers. This because this is because of the limitation of the uh, uh, fluorescent uh, props. So you you ought know, to uh, not get an overlap between uh, each channels. You want so right now the uh, for each round only four marks will be visualized. But uh, then you can have have a second round, then you can uh, apply, I mean, in, uh, stack them together to get an uh, eight uh, plex marker. Thank you. And our next audience member wants to know, how easily can this be modified for other markers, like, for example, non-tumor research? That's a good question. Uh, so you can uh, ask uh, Outview to uh, customer label your primary antibodies for you, then you can uh, apply your uh, your own antibodies for other purpose, like um, non-tumor studies. Thank you. And since the primary antibodies are still on the tissue after round two, is it possible to go back and add the probes back to round one? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? Sure. Since the primary antibodies are still on the tissue after round two, is it possible to go back and add the probes back to round one? Theoretically, uh, it is possible because all the antibodies still are bound uh, on the tissue. So even after uh, stripping, you remove all the uh, uh, fluorescent probes, so you can still uh, uh, reapply uh, the probe back to the uh, section. Thank you, Jose. And we have time for a couple more questions. Can this technology be used to study the inflammatory microenvironment in TB and or other viral infections? Um, there's this this technology is just I think it's a, a general, very general uh, technology. You can basically you can apply it to uh, any uh, other areas uh, you're interested in, so you just make sure uh, before you apply the assay, make sure uh, make sure you have checked the uh, uh, the uh, barcode uh, specificity on, on your on your uh, 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 species of interest. Thank you, Anjave. We have time for one more question. How is the application done over slide? So between so the amplification is done uh, in between uh, a primary antibody in, incubation and uh, a counter staining. So they will uh, they ha- they have a a, a special uh, region. So you apply uh, your that, that region directly onto uh, your section. So this is a uh, done all done uh, automatically on the slide. Thank you so much, Jose, and thank you for this informative presentation. Would you like to provide any closing remarks for our audience members before we go? I just want to say thank you everyone for taking time to join this webinar. What I share today just based on my own knowledge and experience. So if you want to no more in-depth knowledge uh, about this technology, please uh, reach out to the, the vendors. So again, uh, stay safe and do well. Today, thank you again for your time today and for your important research. And I'd also like to thank LabRoots and our sponsor, Leica Biosystems, for underwriting today's educational webcast. And before we go, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions, questions we didn't have time for today and those submitted during the on-demand period will be addressed by the speaker via the contact information provided at the time of registration. And we would once again like to thank Chefe today for this great research and for this presentation. 
This webcast can be viewed on demand and Lab Roots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.